speaker is Martin Baides from KIT on the quantum simulation of the Rowing model in the ultrasound capping region. Okay, perfect. So good morning, everybody. And um, also, I would like to thank our organizers and the organizing committee for the chance to present our work here at this beautiful conference in this beautiful city. And um, this work um, has been done in Katsu at KIT in um, the chair of Professor Ustinov, also attended this conference earlier this week. Um, this year I started, uh, two months ago I started a position in Glasgow and I've been traveling back and forth between Karlsruhe and Glasgow. In one of the slides I changed the colors from Karlsruhe green to Glasgow blue. Um, nevertheless, accidentally, all the work was done in Karlsruhe. So um, this has to be acknowledged. And it has been um, the PhD topic of um, a graduate student who recently finished, uh, Jochen Braumüller. He's sitting in the audience. There's also still his paper outside. And um, we are around um, after the talk and the coffee breaks. If you're interested, um, you can easily talk to us. Uh, I will be talking about another analog quantum simulation scheme. Um, it's um, on the Rabi model. We also had a couple of talks in this conference on that uh, system. And um, with our um, simulation scheme, we were able to model to probe the Rabi Hamiltonian in the ultra strong coupling regime. Um, so there's the Rabi model is of fundamental interest. It um, describes um, both the most fundamental interaction between light and matter. Here's a graphical depiction which we've taken from a conference Enrico Solano um, organized probably a year or two ago. It's a nice graphical depiction of what's happening. So we have light or light bulbs, photons, in harmonic system. Um, there's um, matter, and the most simple form of matter is a qubit. And then there's an interaction of various strengths, so these strengths. This is a Rabi Hamiltonian. There's an harmonic part with a transition frequency omega r. There's a matter part, the qubit part, with um, the qubit frequency. And then uh, the most general form of um, interaction in this system. Um, if the coupling G is strong, or it's even well, ultra strong or deep strong, I'm going to explain later what exactly this means. So if this is um, a large frequency uh, on the same order, as uh, the transition frequencies in these both in both of these quantum systems, then the energy diagram of the uncoupled system is breaking down. You have new level structures, and you uh, start having a strongly entangled system, also with um, cat states in the harmonic part in the resonator. There um, has been growing interest in the ultra strong coupling regime, or even the deep strong coupling regime, um, in our field, superconducting circuits. This has been. Um, Accidentally started uh, in the Munich group about eight years ago. And uh, now, um, the last years, there's been renewed interest. There have been publications by the Waterloo group, by the Tokyo group, um, showing um, ultra strong coupling. Um, there's also a work by the DiCarlo group where they did a digital simulation of the Rabi model, uh, which appeared back to back with our publication. Um, also, later today, we will have a talk on iron traps where ultrasound coupling has been implemented. So in general, this is a very interesting um, um, situation which um, attracts uh, lots of experimental attention nowadays. Our um, system of choice is a superconducting qubit, in particular a transmon. We have our own type of transmon. We call it a concentric transmon. You see the qubit here. There's a disk. Then there's an outer ring. These are the two capacitance, or the two metal plates forming the capacitor. Um, we'll have two Josen junctions forming a split junction, or like a DC split um, geometry. And there's a readout resonator. This is a microstrip lambda half resonator. On top of it, for dispersive readout of our qubit. And on chip, we have um, a local flux bias, which is also impedance matched. And this allows us to apply both a static flux, a static current, and a fast current. So with the fast current, we are then able to change the qubit splitting with, uh, in nanoseconds by um, simply breaking this um, um, the uniformity and uh, by um, um, breaking the gradimetric uh, screening um, because the uh, current is applied just from one side. It's a conventional transmon system with an EJ over C of about 120. In Karlsruhe, we have a fairly large clean room. We do uh, EVM lithography. We do metal deposition, mostly um, aluminum liftoff. And the materials we're using is just aluminum and aluminum oxide for the tunnel junction. Um, lifted off uh, intrinsic silicon substrate. The coherence times we get are okay. So we have about T1s between, consistently between 10 and 15 microseconds, and we didn't push these numbers uh, much yet. Um, here's the typical T1 measurement of our system. 
we can also measure T2. Uh, that's in the order of a few microseconds. If we um, do an echo T2, a spin Hahn uh, measurement, um, we'll get about 10 microseconds. And um, we can also experimentally show that we're able to uh, have a good control on the phase of our qubit, the equatorial phase, or the C rotation, by this uh, measurement scheme, where we do a pi over two first, then we change the level splitting. This corresponds to controlled precession around the C-axis um, for a certain time, delta t. Uh, we detune the qubit uh, again, back to um, the origin value, do another pi over two and read it out. And um, in measurement, we get these nice um, sinusoidal oscillations which uh, tells us we control the phase within um, the coherent time um, quite precisely. Um, the transmon is an anharmonic uh, system, so it's not really a qubit. It has higher levels, and this is a full Hamiltonian. In this talk, um, we're just going to use the two um, um, lowest levels, so it's going to be a qubit for most of the work I'm presenting here. Uh, there's a particular feature to the um, concentric transmon. It has an inductive shunt. And if the concentric transmon is biased off sweet spot, this inductive shunt um, causes a persistent current, a DC current, um, supercurrent um, in the system. And this um, supercurrent carries a magnetic flux. Um, and therefore, also a magnetic dipole is associated with um, a transmon being um, biased off the sweet spot. And this magnetic dipole is now um, can be coupled to a neighboring uh, transmon. And thereby, we are able to mediate CC interaction. If we have, um, a, for example, a bilinear chain with um, um, the Josen junctions oriented along the horizontal axis, we will have CC interaction along the vertical axis and um, XX, uh, simply XX interaction along the horizontal axis. And there's been a theory work by our group um, published about two years ago where we showed that such a bilinear chain is a, an analog um, simulator for the Fermi Hubbard, 1D Fermi Hubbard system with spin. Um, another work where we used the concentric transmon, um, um, an experimental work, uh, appeared on the archive recently, and there we used the anemonicity. And um, in, in this work, we um, 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 measured the change of um, the ground um, transition, the zero one transition, by um, detuned uh, microwave uh, tone, uh, which affects, due to the ACS dark effects, the first transition, it also changes the anemonicity, and if you determine both the uh, change in qubit frequency and the anemonicity, you can then calculate the amplitude and phase of that um, uh, propagating microwave. So um, this can act as an AC Stark spectrum analyzer. Now in this talk, I will talk about the Ravi model. Uh, again, there's a semitonian, there's a graphical depiction, which you all seen probably lots of times at this conference and also show before. Now, depending on the coupling strengths, um, if it's small or strong or large, one um, can distinguish um, several regimes. Um, weak coupling means um, coupling is um, uh, coupling frequency is less than the line width of the individual quantum systems, and that's um, physically not so interesting situation. It becomes more interesting when um, the coupling strength is larger than the dissipation rate in both quantum systems, and then you start having a coherent oscillation if you're on resonance between both systems. Uh, reaching the ultra-strong, even the deep-strong coupling regime. Ultra-strong means um, G is larger than a tenth of the transition frequencies. Then um, the um, rotating wave approximation breaks down and um, also the level schemes um, become uh, really complicated, but at the same time interesting. Typically, in our community, we have small couplings, and then um, we can apply the rotating wave approximation, which means um, these higher order terms uh, can be neglected and we end up having the Jane's coming semitonian, which I've um, shown here down uh, at the bottom. Um, a few years ago, our uh, conference organizer had a proposal, theory, theory proposal, um, and he showed if you take a Jane's Cummings um, Hamiltonian, you apply two tones, two transverse um, microwave drives, or Ravi drives, with um, amplitude eta one, eta two, omega one, and omega two are the frequencies, and then you go into the reference frame of the strong drive, uh, the first drive. Um, you obtain that um, Hamiltonian. You do um, uh, other transformations. Uh, so you uh, switch into the interaction picture, do your basis change. And most importantly, you consider constraints uh, on the applied frequencies and um, amplitudes. One constraint is the difference between both 
applied drives have to match the amplitude of the first drive. There's a new transition frequency of the harmonic oscillator, omega effective. That's the difference between the old transition frequency and the um, lab frame um, minus uh, drive frequency. And um, the resonator and the qubit are both on resonance or close to, well, close to resonance have a little detuning. Then that Hamiltonian can be recast as a Rabi Hamiltonian with new effective transition frequencies for the harmonic part and the qubit part. And most importantly, these are set by the outer applied drives. So we can uh, engineer the drives to have transition frequencies on the order of megahertz for the harmonic system, the same for the qubit system. And interestingly, the coupling strength is only reduced by a factor of two here. And in our circuits, we typically have coupling on the order of 10 megahertz or something. So um, this is megahertz, and we can achieve the same with um, 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 uh, if, if choosing the um, applied drives properly. Here's a picture of our experimental implementation. We start with uh, our concentric transmon qubit. We couple it to a bosonic mode. That's a harmonic oscillator. And um, the qubit is coupled to readout resonator, which is coupled to transmission line. There's a second bosonic resonator on chip, but we don't use it for that experiment. So it can be neglected. We also have the flux bias here. And um, yeah, we measure it in our lab in Karlsruhe. Here's um, <laughs> just an image of, our, of one of our cryostarts, a coal plate with lots of microwave electronics and uh, um, components and, and filters and, and, and circulators uh, in it. Um, we use mostly commercial electronics. We started working on our own FPGA-based uh, electronics with uh, engineers in Karlsruhe, but for this experiment, it was all done with commercial uh, electronics. And there's also um, quite a project on software development. This was mentioned yesterday by Jonas Bylander, and I just want to send you a link, or show you a link. So if you're interested in a particular resonator fitting, we had a paper a few years ago, and you can find all the code um, on that um, web page. Now, going back to the experiment, if you have um, a qubit resonator system, um, then you first characterize it spectroscopically. Also, you characterize it in time domain. Here's the time domain data. Uh, if you change the qubit frequency as a function of flux and uh, bring the qubit on resonance with that bosonic mode resonator, we observe these um, nice coherent oscillations, this um, chevron pattern. Here's a line trace uh, of one of them. And you see these nice coherent uh, oscillations going up and down, um, corresponding to coherent swaps of, quanta, of one quanta. And from the um, frequency here, we can um, determine the coupling strength. It's five megahertz for that uh, geometrical um, defined uh, coupling strength between qubit and uh, resonator. Now next, we turn on one drive. And um, um, we start with the system with our qubit being on resonance with our resonator, we then detune the qubit, excite the qubit, so we prepare the qubit state, bring it back on resonance with a, a resonator. At the same time, apply a strong microwave drive with frequency omega one for time delta t before turning off the drive, detuning the qubit, and reading out the qubit. And the measured data, which I just saw in a second, is really complicated. And to understand this, we did also lots of numerical simulations using Q-tip. Um, here you see simulations of um, the expected qubit population in lab frame and rotating frame. So in lab, we have these fast Rabi oscillations with an envelope, given by the blue data, or by the blue um, curve, uh, the envelope showing um, a state collapse, some intermediate um, regime, this is an idling regime, and then um, later a revival. And in the simulation, we already included uh, dissipation and decoherence. Here's the experimental data, which matches um, quite well our numerical simulation. So you see these fast oscillations. The um, average um, qubit population approach is 0.5 for these time scales. And then um, we have larger oscillations, and this continues for some time. So this um, state collapse idling revival, that's a hallmark of large coupling or ultra strong coupling. And um, we can also quantify it if we take the effective coupling strengths G and the um, effective transition frequency, we uh, have a value of 0.6, and this puts us safely into the ultra-strong coupling regime. We can make it more complicated by um, preparing various qubit states. 
So in the data I showed here, this was done, um, the qubit was in the ground state. Here's more data where we also kept the qubit in ground state, but we changed the effective um, microwave, um, um, uh, effective transition frequency of the harmonic system. We also prepared the qubit in an up state or in, at uh, an intermediate state uh, with a certain phase um, around the, um, on the equator. And um, all of this can be nicely um, described and understood with, um, with uh, numerical simulations. Um, next, we then um, added the second drive to uh, simulate the full Rabi Hamiltonian. And to, to understand this, numerical simulations are also um, useful. Here you see simulations with the amplitude of the second drive being set to zero and um, being finite. And if you look closely, there are only small changes. So the frequency in lab frame is changing a bit, but not so much. And um, the overall amplitude is also changing a bit, so it goes actually up here. Um, there's maybe some beating happening um, before the revival. The revival happens at a bit shorter time scales than uh, without um, the second drive. But it's not a significant change, actually, in the overall spectrum. And that's also what we see in experiment. We have um, an increase in um, amplitude when setting the second, ampli second drive amplitude uh, to non-zero. Um, but, but there are lots of subtle structures, and part of them are um, what you think are associated to um, non-perfect um, non um, uh, frequencies uh, on chip. There are um, maybe some ring-up dynamics. There may be also frequency crowding. We may also cross-talk to um, the second resonator, which we don't want to use for our experiment. So we have some structures which we don't really understand in the experiment, um, in particular if we do um, the two-tone um, experiment. Um, nevertheless, I think the, um, the general structure is captured uh, well. And now to summarize, um, so I had two parts in my talk. I first uh, um, presented the consentic transplant, which is our um, qubit of choice for um, superconducting quantum technology. I also briefly mentioned um, its um, a feature of providing non-stochastic coupling, which means CC and XX coupling. Um, and um, we will also use it as a quantum sensor. And then the second, the main part of this talk, I uh, showed you our data on light matter interaction, where we simulated the Rabi model, observed non-classical collapse and revival dynamics, and uh, obtained a coupling strength uh, of 0.6. So with this, I would like actually to thank um, first uh, my group in Karlsruhe, uh, Alexey Ostinov, who supported me um, all these years, uh, Jochen Braumeller already mentioned, so he's sitting up there. Um, I would like to thank all of you for your attention. And um, there are positions in Glasgow. It's a very interesting, uh, challenging uh, project. Um, if you're interested or you know someone who may be interested, please come up, talk to me, or send me an email. Thank you for your attention.